This movie and the ones that follow in the next section on working with the airliner are going to be some of the most important movies of this entire series. It's how to start using this program as professionals would use this program. So you'll be learning some real time-saving tricks and tips like how to repurpose your content, save it, and how anime lets you do some really cool things that lets you save time later on. Let's go ahead and start styling a really crisp and styled version of our frog as compared to the sections that are going to be following where we do something a little more naturalistic. We'll look at how to use some of the filters and filtering capabilities and special effects in ways that I didn't cover in tremendous detail when we were simply learning how to basically use those items. So let's hop in to filling out, dressing up our frog character. The first thing we need to do is bring in one of our characterization sketches. So I'll come down to the layers palette, select image layer, and in the working files you can come to section 10 the frog and simply grab the frog sketch that's in there and choose open. Now it comes in significantly larger than our work area so the easiest thing to do is come down to our layers tool keyboard shortcut 2 and we can simply scale this down to where it's a size that we're comfortable working on it. We'll go ahead and do keyboard shortcut 1 and move our main frog into the scene. The next step is to begin creating a very rich detailed hierarchy of your character. We've looked at really basic ways to create characters and you're welcome to do it that way. However, if you really want to leverage all the capabilities here in Anime Studio Pro, you need to approach character development with a fairly sophisticated mind of how it works. So let me show you what I mean. The first thing that I like to do when I work with characters is actually go ahead and start with what is closest to the viewer and then work backwards and stack those items on later. You can do the reverse of that, start from the background elements like the legs here and move up towards the eyes. I usually like the eyes first if I'm working with a head on like this because it's the first place that people look. So I kind of set some design flavor working with the eyes and then I extend that to the rest of the character. Let's go ahead and get rid of layer one. Well actually we'll rename that later on but let's create a new group layer. And this group layer is going to contain both eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and name this two eyes. Well that's original isn't it? And I'll move it above the frog because we're going to be actually working uh, on top of the frog sketch there. Layer 1 I'm going to go ahead and drag into two eyes, but we're not quite done yet. We're going to create a fairly sophisticated structure here to work with. So with two eyes selected, I'm going to come to my Layers palette and select Group. And we're going to create a new group. I'm going to name this one Right Eye. Well, I had right. Let me finish that off. And it may seem like a lot of unnecessary development of folders and structures to work with, but as we start developing even the simple element of the eyes, you're going to see some tremendous benefits that you'll get when you start animating, when you've got this level of style and structure to work with. So from right eye, I'm going to go ahead and drag in layer one right here. Within the right eye layer, we're going to have several layers. There's going to be the background element of the eye, then we're going to have the pupils on their own layer so we can animate them because we've already learned that you can animate shapes but you get control over animating layers so anything that has got movement on it or potentially has movement as part of it we want to have on its own separate layer because it's going to be easier to manage. The eyebrow will be on its own layer and then we'll go ahead and we'll create a couple subgroups so that the entire eye with the pupils can move together but that the pupil can move differently. Sounds complex, not so bad actually. So let's go ahead and rename layer one. I'll double click on that and we'll name this eyeball. So that's our basic starting point right there. And I'm going to zoom in on this. If you've skipped some of the earlier sections, this will give you an idea of where to go look so you can catch up because I won't spend as much time going over some of the details as we work on this. So let's go ahead and start with a circle. I'll go ahead and drag that down and I'm going to create everything 
perfectly aligned right now when we want to skew this eye a little bit I'll wait until the entire layer is done and then we can do it all at once so instead of doing each element individually that's something best to save for layer uses here's our first special effect when we render this out I'll do a quick little render we see that uh, we get a nice circle here but it's it's just plain boring white I want some more panache to this and to make those renders a little bit larger and easier to see I'm actually going to come up to project settings and let me pick something a little bit larger here from our presets like NTSC which will give us a larger render than that small one and select OK now when I render this file out for proofing we can see a better view of what's going on let's go ahead and engage one of those special effects I'll select this shape keyboard shortcut Q and I'm going to move down to gradient I'll pull up my gradient dialog box we'll switch to radial gradient the lightest color I'm going to leave white but the black color I'm going to go ahead and change to a little bit of a jaundiced yellow just to give this a little bit more flavor I'll select OK we can see that preview right there and I'll click OK and accept those functions now for the eye itself I'm going to go ahead keyboard shortcut command D or control D on the PC and engage the random line width right now instead I'm going to bring this up to something more like 8 instead of 1 We'll look at our display quality turn on anti-aliasing so we can see that a little bit better and now when we do a render we have the makings of our eye and the next movie will continue developing the sophisticated layers to make animating easy